moving from that to this. Thank you, you just Mr. do. Uh, Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty has less than two months left to his term, but that's not stopping him from trying to put a stop to government-controlled health care. This week, the governor personally joined the other states who have filed lawsuits against the bill, but with time running out, what does he expect to get accomplished? Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty joins us live today from Minneapolis. Good morning to you, Governor. Good morning, Steve. Uh, I understand you have filed a friend of the court brief as governor because your attorney general in Minnesota will not uh, join the other 20 states and file suit against the federal government, right? Yeah, that's right. In certain states, only the attorney general has the ability to sue or defend lawsuits. That's the case in Minnesota. So I couldn't join into that lawsuit in my, uh, in, on behalf of the state. But she gave me permission to do it individually in my capacity as governor. So that's what I've done. And, and that court case down in Florida, by the way, initially people didn't give it much of a chance. Mm -hmm. I think there's a real chance that some or all of Obamacare could be uh, you know, repealed through that court action, and I think that would be a very positive development. Well, the judge there already ruled that it could go forward, correct? That's right. Okay, uh, which was different from the Michigan case, I believe. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you would know about why you believe that health care should be repealed. In your own state of Minnesota, you were the first governor in decades that actually found a way to cut spending, and that's what you think should happen on the federal level as well. Well, that's exactly right, Gretchen. From 1960 uh, until I became governor, the average two-year increase in spending in Minnesota for two years was 21%, which is about the rate of increase uh, under President Obama's first two years as president. We've now got that down to about 1.9% a year, and in the two-year period we're in now, for the first time in the history of my state, 150 years, mm -hmm. we've cut spending in real terms. And Obamacare is, is one of the main uh, problems we're going to have in terms of federal spending going forward. That doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't fix health care. It is mm -hmm. broken, but Obamacare is the wrong way to do it. And you know, uh, Governor, you know that you have written this great op-ed. And finally, it, you've made it so easy to understand how we are spending more money than we could possibly afford because you break it down into a booze situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, you know, you, if you want, you, in terms of government reform, you can stay up late and, and uh, go to seminars and read white papers and books. And if you've got time, I encourage people to continue to do that. But all you really need to know about government reform is this. People behave differently when you go to a wedding at a cash bar versus an open bar. That's if right. they think something is free, they consume it differently, they treat it differently, and whether it's education, health care, or anything else, if you create the impression that something's free and you get to consume it endlessly and the bill magically goes somewhere else, that's a system that's doomed to fail. So that was the point of that op-ed. And close the open bar in Washington, D.C. Close the open bar. That's exactly right. And I, I said that recently to somebody on the East Coast. I said, you know, if you go to a wedding when there's a cash bar versus an open bar, and they said, well, who has a cash bar at a wedding? Uh -oh. I said, well, come on to Minnesota, and we'll show you some in the rural areas <laughs> well, or other uh, parts of Minnesota. Exactly. Being a Very native of Minnesota. Very different on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. And that mirrors politics uh, to some extent as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this topic. It still has to do with health care. We've covered this here on Fox & Friends, that it looks like the White House acquiescing now to some big companies when it comes to their health care requests. They've asked for these waivers because they say, look, we cannot afford health care for our employees anymore. What do you make of that? Well, I think it foreshadows a lot of the problems that are going to come with Obamacare. Right here in Minnesota, Gretchen, we had 3M discontinue part of its health care plan for retirees, citing one of the reasons as Obamacare mandates and requirements. You saw recently companies like McDonald's with these mini-med plans say, look, we're going to drop our coverage if you don't uh, give us a waiver or give us a, a break from Obamacare. So they're doing dozens, hundreds of these waivers right. because the system won't work and people are going to drop their coverage if they don't get a waiver. It's an indicator that Obamacare is broken. Sure, and some of the people asking for those waivers, big unions. Governor, uh, stop by the studio anytime you're in New York City. John, our, our uh, open bar opened about, what, five minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, <I think> <laughs> Ten minutes ago, so come on down. All right, very good. <laughs> I actually remember the governor Sounds visited great. us at, at a bar yeah. when we were at the convention two years ago. That's remember right. That? <laughs> Indeed. I don't know if you remember that or not, governor but uh, we were actually doing a show from the bar remember i didn't realize steve could pack it away that much but yes i remember <laughs> all right good to see you gov nice all right thanks thank you very much speaking of governors did you see the debut of sarah palin's alaska last night we're going to take a look at the new reality show